Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 1.3. We're given an equation and we're asked to find certain things about its graph. The first thing we're asked to look at are the x and y intercepts. So the x intercepts are the points on the graph which lie on the x axis. And since they're on the x axis, that means the y coordinate is zero. So I take my equation and I'm looking for the x values which correspond to a y value of 0. So I substitute y equals 0 into the equation. And I get x minus 1 quantity squared is 25. So to solve this for x, I need to get the x by himself. I can take care of that square by taking the square root of both sides. So by extracting square roots, I get x minus 1 is plus or minus 5. And so I get x is 1 plus or minus 5. And going through each case, I get x equals 1 plus 5, which is 6. Or x can be 1 minus 5, negative 4. Now once again, the x-intercepts are points. So these are the x values of the points. The y value of the points are 0, and so for my final answer I get 6, 0 and negative 4, 0. And so those are the x-intercepts. For the y-intercept, these are points which lie on the y-axis, so that means I'm going to set the x equal to 0. Substituting in x equals 0, I get 0 minus 1. Quantity squared gives me 1. Subtract the 1 off from both sides, and I get y squared equals negative 24. There's no real number that I can square to get a negative number, so there are no real solutions to this equation. What's that mean? That means that there's no y, no y intercepts. Okay, so that does it for the intercepts. Okay, the second item is we're asked to create a table of sample points, uh, which are on the graph of this equation. So how do I do that? I'm going to take my equation, solve it for y, and plug in friendly values for x. So we'll start out with the equation as given to us. I can subtract the quantity x minus 1 squared from both sides. And then this negative here, uh, I can think of it as a negative 1 times y squared. So I'll multiply both sides by a negative 1. Now when I multiply the right hand side by the negative 1, I distribute it to both. And essentially, I'm just going to reverse the order of the subtraction. And so I get y squared is the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 25. Now I extract square roots. So y is plus or minus square root of x minus 1 squared minus 25. So I'm going to pick some values for x, plug it in, and get out some values for y. Okay, so let's go over and try to make a table. So x, y, and then the corresponding point on the graph, x, comma, y. Now we know for a couple x values what the y value is equal to because we went ahead and found the x-intercepts. So I'll record these up here. We know that the x-intercepts are negative 4, 0, and 6, 0. So when x is negative 4 and x is 6, we know what's going on. So let's pick maybe x equals negative 5. I substitute in negative 5, and what do I get? I get negative 5 minus 1, quantity squared, minus 25. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. 
36 minus 25 is 11. So I get y equals plus or minus square root 11. And this gives us two points, negative 5 plus or minus square root 11. Okay, since x equals negative 4 we already know about, let's try x equals negative 3. So I plug negative 3 into the formula. I've got negative 3 minus 1, quantity squared, minus 25. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is a positive 16. So I get the square root of 16 minus 25, and I'm getting into trouble because this is plus or minus a negative number. In particular, it's negative 9. So, uh, what do I do in this case? Well, since this is a non-real number, there's no point on the graph that corresponds to negative 3. And if you think about this, uh, I need x minus 1 squared to be bigger than or equal to 25 in order to get a positive number out of this, or 0 actually. If I plug in something and this square is less than 25, I'm going to get a negative number and I won't get a point on the graph. So if I plugged in negative 2, I would get in trouble. If I plugged in negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, um, I'm not going to get a real number out for my answer. The first real number I get out again is going to be at 6. And then if I plug in anything bigger than 6, I'll get something out. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 7 then for my next point. So I plug in x equals 7, put it into the formula. I get plus or minus the square root of 7 minus 1, quantity squared, minus 25, which is plus or minus the square root of 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 squared is 36, 36 minus 25, hmm, that looks familiar. I get plus or minus square root 11. And so once again, I get a pair of points, 7 comma plus or minus square root 11. And then I could continue. I could plug in 8. I get 49 minus 25. And so I get the square root of 24 plus or minus. And instead of simplifying the square root of 24, I'm going to leave it as a square root of 24 so it'll help me uh, graph the points when I need to. And I can plug in a negative 6. If I plug a negative 6 in, I get negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. Squared is 49. 49 minus 24, excuse me, 25 is 24. So I'll also get out. Oops, plus or minus square root 24. And you'll find as you continue, you're going to get this symmetry. It's not really a symmetry about, the, about x equals 0. It's more of a symmetry around x equals 1. And in fact, when we get into chapter 7, we'll be able to graph this without plotting any points at all. And we'll be able to graph it fairly quickly, and we'll see that pan out. Okay, so you can continue making points if you need to. Um, one thing you'll notice is that you have the two x-intercepts here. And if you have a point that's not an x-intercept, you always get two points, a plus or a minus. And that means there's symmetry here about the x-axis, which we'll talk about in a minute.